Thank you. Greet you in the name of the Lord. We're glad for Bethel Church. It's brought their prayer meeting down to be with us tonight. Be in the Lord's will. Brother Allen will be preaching here in just a little bit. If he if he beats me to the floor. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> Sister Mary uh, has come to man her daughter-in-law is very ill tonight, and uh, she would like to stand in, in prayer line for her daughter-in-law, and we're also going to anoint a prayer call for her to take to her daughter-in-law. So if you believe in this, you come forward. If you don't believe in it, that's fine. No problem. Swear. If you believe in it, would you come on up and help us? Any, anybody from our visiting church wants to come up and get in this prayer? I want to invite you to do so. Just say I love the Lord. 
a spiritual and inspiring message. Brother Earl started it out yeah. uh, with 1 Kings chapter 18, the contest on Mount Carmel. And then uh, I was all over. I shotgunned it uh, on Monday, I guess. And then last night, uh, Kevin was talking about eight, uh, Romans chapter 8. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And so the, the three messages that we've heard so far has been uh, inspiring us to get back where we need to be with God and present ourselves and put put what this flesh wants to do aside and, and, and just say, here, Lord, here it is. You use it. No matter what it is you want me to do, I want to be a willing vessel. And God will take that and use it today. Hey, hey little is much when God is in it. Because I've had people say, I can't testify. I can't see. Uh, I'm, I'm backward and I can't raise my hand. Little is much when God is in it. Amen. It's worth a hundred dollar bill to a preacher sometimes. Like, that's right. A blessing, Lord. When the singer is up here singing, bless them, Lord. That's what it's like to them. When they hear the crowd uh, asking God's blessings upon them, they can sing better, they can preach better, whatever, testify better, whatever's going on. It's a whole lot better when it's seasoned with prayer and blessings. Amen. I love the Lord. I, I feel I feel wonderful tonight. I feel His Holy Spirit. I thank God that. He gave Rod the safe turnout. I prayed when I looked out the window earlier and I said, Well, he hasn't left yet. And I looked back and he was gone. So I started praying, Lord, give him a safe journey there. And then he called me up and told me what the doctor said. And I praise God again that the Lord watched over him. The test was going to come back good. And then uh, I didn't see him come home. I kept wondering, Is he home? Is he home? I knew he was at Ryan's eating. I got jealous of that. I said, No, yeah, okay, he ate a steak for me. But thank God he's here and I praise the Lord for that. All right, someone else? Yeah, I'm going to pray for all of them. I don't forget it not. Yes, you can. I don't forget it not. I'm going to be sure to pray for her to live. She's got the street girl. Dickie's got to walk in the boat. She's 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 got a lot of those holes in the boat. Anybody else? Brother Bob, we ran into a lot of young white church asking to pray for her son and his wife. My name's Heather and Chris. Really don't know the full situation, but she said they both do not know God and they really need the Lord in their lives. So amen. 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 Right. I, I read her post uh, this afternoon, I believe it was, they were going to come home, then they kept him another day because of the blisters, like well, little blisters. I think they said his oxygen dropped at night. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But I, I still believe everything's going to be all right. I believe God done already took care of it. Amen. Somebody else? Brother Bobby, I still remember Mom. She went Monday and had that first iron infusion. She done really well. I didn't make her sick or anything. She goes back Friday for the other one. She always keeps her in prayer that God can depend on her. Amen. Amen. Brother Bobby, I still remember Mom. She went Monday and had that first iron infusion. Alright choir, if you would come up, let's sing a couple songs and then on the let's do it on the second one. Let's have some fellowship on the second song.
Florida. A lot of time in Florida, there's a lot of time you get. You know what? Stand up for Florida, something we should never be taught. All the uh, preachers are going to I actually did a song on heart about it. I think I'm going to sing it tonight. Huh? Why did you? Somebody's testimony. God, I'm going to sing it. And y'all really want that? Absolutely. All right, yeah. I'd like to sing it by the roof. Okay. We're ready to go. Love the song. Bless you, brother. My Lord, church.
Yes, sir. Go away, Jay. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. That's what I was saying. He loves the Saints. Yes. 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 Yes.
he looked at me, I said, well, yeah, I'll tell you, doesn't he? I got saved the night before. Amen. I was with the car and we got my hair cut. He didn't really recognize me, but I'll tell you, when the Lord gets a hold of me, he is. Where the lips say 
Don't give up. You tell us supposed to say, don't give up. What was it, two calls for the night? Was that last night? Yeah. Not four weeks. And you don't give up. You mess up to keep going at it again. Isaiah. This is another song. This is one song that just happened here. A little bit of bluegrass to them. I, I love the sound of bluegrass, just to be honest with you. I, that's what I like to play. If I can play it every day, I can. If I could play it banjo, I believe I'd have it banjo. But Kevin wouldn't like it, but I'd have it up. <laughs> but I do love the Lord. Somebody's a testimony. God's been good to us. Amen. Listen to this song. This here's good. I have no mother. I have no father. I have no sister or brother. I am an orphan child. My life on earth has been so lonely. I have no one here to love me. I am an orphan child.
family that you, you don't hardly ever see, and just every now and then run into them and speak, say hi. I'm telling you, it's a shame we all don't get together more often what, what we want to do in life. I'm telling you, God's gave us a great big family. We just don't, we don't get around each other or get life, it's too busy for us or something. Other. You know, it's the thing, sometimes we need to put things, just set things aside and go visit our friends and our loved ones and our family. That's what we really need to do. We let, we let this, this time push us to keep doing each and every thing instead of doing things that we really should be doing. God's made the time for us. We just have to do it. I love the Lord. This song here, I, I, I love this song. My brother used to sing it here, passed away. I tell you, they sung at my dad's funeral. And uh, this guy just happened to have him preach at dad's funeral. And they actually run around together with these young kids down in Rich Creek. And he wanted to sing a song for dad that day. And we never know what it's going to be or anything, you know. But it broke my heart because this is a true song. Times may have changed in me. You know, times may have changed in each and every one of our lives. If I'm getting from young to going old, from a being a sinner to being a new child in Christ. I'm telling you, a lot of things you have to look at in life. Time has made a change. And I'm thankful that the time has made a change in my life from what I used to be to what I am now. You know, there's no guarantee we'll be here tomorrow or whatever, but I tell you, we need, we need to serve the Lord and be more, more, uh, more of a worker for Him because we, we fail in that a lot of times. I'm telling you, God's been good to us. And I'm telling you, we, we do do that. We fail. We fail badly. But you know, he, he's always right there for us to hold us up, picks right back up, pulls out of the mud or the dirt or whatever it takes, Brother Bobby, I'm telling you. But time has made a change in my life. I said that about it from the time I was young. I remember things that I could do. And this song, was, he, he mentioned some things about this. I remember when I was young, what all I could do. But at times made a change in me because I can't do anything like I used to do. I love the Lord. He, there's her old team. used to work with my dad. Too. It's funny how you run into people that know your parents from a long time ago and just, just by being a child of Christ and running into each other like you. Yeah, I'm I love Brother Harold. I love Jerry back there. I'm telling you. I love each and every one of y'all. Been, been an inspiration to me. I'm telling you. Nice Old oh, Gary sitting there on the front. I'll tell you, Gary. You just don't love that. I love it. I love each and every one of y'all. And I know. 
and you get to take them out to glory. Keep that tongue from firing out to God because the time is running out so fast. I'm telling you, you can lay down tonight and I'll wake up in the morning. Jesus can come back grab your shirt before you open your eyes. So we're living in perilous times today, dangerous times. It's just not the time, well, no time is the time to play with God, but especially in this day time we're living in today. Be serious with the Lord. Just trust Him and hold on. If you, if you are a Christian, hang on with everything there is in you. If you're not, seek the Lord. Seek Him. Just stay on Him. Maybe He'll give you that one more call. Maybe not. But I'll say this go out of this world, try it. Amen. Lord, amen. In God's good grace. I love you tonight. Thank you for the church. I, I wish you'd write that song to say to us, Bob. Will you write it to me? Yeah, I thought we were sure we'd bring it back to us. She sang that for us every time we go up at the church. I mean, it makes a good power, that song. And I want to write it. You know what I'm talking about? I want to do anything I can. I, I'm glad I'm a Christian. No, I'll say that to you. All right. Thank you, Lord. Of A might be in this because they're, they're going to play it, they're key. I don't know what key I sing it in, but I'm just going to sing it for the Lord. What do you say, Greg? Can he walk? Can he walk? You can only do it in there. You can 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 do it in there.
change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we're all going to be caught up out of this world to meet the Lord in the air. And there shall we ever be uh, with the Lord. And you know what? Uh, in the book of St. John, is where I'm going to try to go to. Uh, the Bible says uh, Jesus was a talk uh, uh, to his disciples. And he said, I must go away. But I go away. Uh, you cannot come. Uh, but when I go, come back. Uh, then you can go with me. And Peter said, Lord, uh, why cannot I I'll go with you? I'll even go in the prison or in the dead uh, for you. And Jesus uh, said unto Peter, I will thou uh, die for me, Peter. Uh, you know what? The cock uh, shall not crow uh, this night until thou hast denied me uh, thrice. And you know what Peter said? And the rest of the disciples said, uh, We will not uh, deny thee a uh, church. How many times have we denied our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ? How many times has the Lord said, I'm uh, going to do this and we didn't go? How many times has the Lord said, I'm going to visit somebody? and we didn't go how many times in our Christian wall has the Lord said I call somebody and we didn't call how many times I now through this day has the Lord said uh, to call out unto me and we didn't do it uh, you know why uh, we were not obedient of the cry and God uh, they were denied our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ because we are not obedient unto Him how can it work in our hearts and our lives today? How can the law in a dying world I see that we have something in our life that they don't have? And you know what? All the disciples I said they were. I did not cry. But you know what? After he went to the garden and he prayed, I came and touched on his little bit of last night. Jesus went and prayed. And he said, Father, I'm not my will. But let my will I be done. And that little soldier, I come and touch Jesus. And all the disciples, I fled from him. The word of God said, I sprout the shepherd and the sheep. I shall scatter each and every one of them. I took all, I run on for their life. Because they didn't know what was going on. When they got Jesus there in Pilate, Judgment Hall, Peter, I came afar. All and John, I think it was a window open the door and let Peter come in. And one of the maids that was there and said, Oh, are you one of his the disciples? I was Peter's word. I know him not. I will, Peter. I went up where they had a fire before it was cold and he was a woman himself. And one of the soldiers, I stayed in there. I let Peter had cut off his ear. I said, didn't I? I see you in the garden with him. And Peter said, I know not of a man. And a few hours later, there was another woman. I came up to him and said, surely there are one of his disciples. For thy speak, I will raise thee. In other words, his speak on a Tell uh, on him that he was a Galilean, that he had walked and talked with Jesus. And Jesus and Peter, he cursed and he said, I know not of a man how many times uh, in our life and our question I uh, walk and we go out uh, to the store or somewhere and will not uh, lift up the name of a Jesus Christ. Uh, I will not I tell someone about Jesus Christ. Oh, we had like we're ashamed. Uh, let people know uh, they were Christian. Oh, well, I'm here to tell you tonight. Uh, we better not uh, be ashamed of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, 
and if you obey, I shall you me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and His holy angel, but if you confess me before this simple and adulterous generation, I will confess you before my Father and His holy angel. How many times are we denying our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How many times are we letting Him down? You know what? He has never let none of us down in here. He said, I'll go all the way with you, even to the end of the world. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go all the way with you. How far are we willing to go for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said, I'll deny thy father, thy mother, thy sister, thy brother, thy son, and thy daughter, and come, pick up thy cross, and follow me, even though I'm right I may not want to go to church. I'm going to see you in my heart. I want to go to the house of God. And where they I want to make a heaven their home. I want to day after a while. I'm determined. and got my mind I'm made up in my feet upon that solid rock. I'm going to make heaven of my home. I want to day after a while. It's time that we stand up for what we believe in. It's time that we uplift the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's time that we let the world know that there is a better way than dying and going to hell. It's time, church. That we stand boldly, like Paul did. He was a bold man. It's time that we stand boldly and let the world know that time is running out on them. It's time to let our people know that brother, sister, I ain't cry that it's not going to be long until the Lord comes back and takes his church and his bride a belly It's time that the we let the world know that we believe in Jesus Christ and that He is the Son of God and that He's coming back again. Amen. As sure as I'm standing up here, church, He's coming back. And if you're not ready to go when He comes back, you're not going to go home to be with Him. You're going to have to pay the mighty wrath of Almighty God. I'm going to go on a little bit further in the Word of God about chapter 21 in St. John the Gospel. After Jesus had resurrected from the dead and showed Himself unto His disciples two or three times they all were gathered together there. And Peter said, I go fishing. Thomas and Jane and the other disciples I said, we go with you. How many times when we're not around a bunch of Christians will we turn back into the world to do the thing that we used to do? You know what? That was what their occupation was before Jesus called them. He said, Behold, I'll make you a fisherman of a man. And you know what? I went back to what they knew to do. And Jesus told them plainly to go out into the world I preach the gospel. I baptize them. I them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then tell them to go back and go back and fish out. Well, they was out in the ship and they looked on the land and it was Jesus standing there he had already made a fire and fed and bread laid upon the coal and he called out unto them he said children have you 
Lord me. And they said, Nay, we have told the all night and have called nothing. And Jesus said, I can let me on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And they were not able to draw it up. And John said, It is the Lord. But you got to realize at this time, a Peter a was making, he grabbed his fisher's coat and jumped into the sea. And they brought a little boat, a dragon of fish, and it was a hundred and fifty and three. And when they all came to land, he said, Come and die every time that we come out of the house of God. The Lord has got a table, a spread for you and I tonight. All we got to do is come and die. It's a weight upon me and every one of us. And then uh, Jesus looked at Simon uh, Peter and he said, uh, Simon of uh, our Jonah, uh, lovest me. And Simon Peter said, uh, Lord, uh, thou know I love thee. He said, uh, Be uh, my lamb. And he said, uh, Simon, a uh, second time, uh, Simon of uh, our Jonah, uh, lovest thou me uh, more uh, than thee. And Peter said, the Lord, I let them know that I love thee. And Jesus, I said, feed my sheep. And Jesus, I told, I said again, I Simon, I bar Jonah, I love us thou, I mean more than thee. And Peter, he was grieved because the Lord had asked him a free time, I love us thou, me. And he said, Lord, I let them know all things. I let them know that I love thee. And he said, I feed my sheep when thou I was young. Thou girded thyself and walked wherever thou wouldst. But when thou get a stone, another man shall gird thee and lead thee where thou wouldst not. I signify what did Peter was going to have to go through for the name of our Lord and our Savior of Jesus Christ. I want you to ask yourself this question. Do I love Jesus? Do I love Him enough to die for Him? Do I love Him enough to serve Him? Do I love Him enough to forsake my family and come out of the house of God and serve Him? You know what? I can't say it. We've got the resin, our body, holy and acceptable unto God as our reasonable a servant. You know why? You can say, I love the Lord. They even said, they'll confess me with their lid, but their heart is far from me. You know why? Whatever Jesus knows, what's in your heart tonight. He don't look on the outside of a person. He look on the inside, on the heart, and he can tell whether you love him or whether you don't. If the Lord was to come back right now, could you lift up your hand and say, come quickly, Jesus. And you know what? I believe I can lift up my hand and say, come quickly, Jesus. Because I am determined to make heaven my home. You know what? There was another man in the Bible who persecuted the church. He wasn't doing the will of God. He was going around destroying everyone and witnessing against them. If they claim to be a Christian, if they claim to know Jesus, if they claim they were saved, there's coming a day in this world that they were going to be persecuted of this life. Uh, they were. Are we going to uh, be bold enough to uh, stand up and say, no matter what uh, you do to me, I serve Jesus. He is my Lord and my Savior. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my strength and my shield. He is my refuge uh, in a storm. He is my advocate uh, with the Father. He is my all in all. And I 
I'm in him. I don't need number one in my heart and in my life because if he's not the number one in your heart and in your life, you're not going to heaven. Amen. Paul was a man. He went out and destroyed everything that he could that claimed to be a Christian. He even went uh, to the high priest of the men and letters uh, to the city of Damascus that if he found any of that way that he would bring her uh, bound to Jerusalem and witness against him. Uh, yeah, uh, what happened uh, on the way uh, to Damascus? Uh, it was a great lie uh, sharing around about Paul, a uh, brighter uh, than the sun. And he heard a boy uh, come out of uh, Saul, a uh, Saul, a uh, white person, a uh, king thou me. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, the one that you persecute. It is hard for me to kid against the priest. And he said, Lord, uh, what will uh, thou have uh, me to do? Uh, you know, a lot of time in our Christian life, uh, we are. I uh, call out to God and say, uh, what will, what is uh, your will uh, for me to do? The Bible tells me uh, the will of God is to believe upon Him who He has seen. Uh, who's that? Uh, Jesus Christ, the one who hung and died on that cross and shed His life's blood that we can have life and have it more abundantly. To make the story a little bit short, uh, Paul uh, went out and God said, that I baptized and went about uh, preaching uh, the gospel uh, wherever he went. Uh, no matter what he had to go through, he was still bold enough Amen, to confess Jesus Christ. Do you love me? Do you love me? If Jesus was to ask you right now, do you love me? Jesus said, he told his disciples, said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll keep the words I have spoken. You know what? We are to love one another as Jesus loved them. He said, I have loved you, and my Father loves you, and we will come and find our abode within you. And I tell you why, I thank God that I've got a God that dwells within me and lets me know when I'm doing wrong or I stumble or I fall because I've got a condemning spirit in me that lets me know. And right then, I can call out uh, to the one and say, Lord, it's me again. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. And you want His faithful, just, and true to forgive us of all our sins. There's no reason that no one should perish. No reason that anyone should die and go to hell. If you go there, it's by your own choice. You can say, I don't choose to go to hell. But if you don't choose to serve the Lord, you're choosing to go to hell. This plan I'm going to put plan is I don't have. And I got a choice to make. Each and every one of us in here tonight has got a choice. Every morning when we wake up or every night before we go to bed. Amen. Either call out to the Lord and thank Him for the blessings this day. Or we can forget about it, go to bed, go to sleep, not worry about it, thank God tomorrow. Well, who knows what holds to tomorrow? God does. But none of us in here tonight has a promise of a tomorrow. We need to have things fixed up right now and ready to go up. Because no one knows the day or the hour the Lord is going to come back. Do you love me? Ask yourself that question. If Jesus was standing in front of you, he'd say, do you love me? He means really deep down love him. Do you love him? Will you serve me? That's what we got to do. we got to love the Lord. He first loved us. Right. Now we need to love Him. And right. serve Him. And worship Him in spirit and in truth. Right. Come on, Brother Bobby. I'm done.
And I, and I said this to the church last night, and I'll say it again tonight. I felt like from the very beginning, I believe most of you guys did too, that this revival was going to be for us. To lift up the church, to get us back on fire the way we was. Because we have slacked off a little bit. We need to get that zeal back. And I want to praise God because there's been one or two that came up here and got that zeal back down through these last couple of days. And if one did, it's worth it all to me. Y'all shouldn't feel that way too. One did. It's worth it all. It's worth any effort we go through. But wouldn't it really be nice if all of us that feel like, well, I have set back on God a little bit, if all of us would just get up and put our pride aside and say, I'm going to go up there and pray. I'm going to go up there and ask God, Lord, you just restore to me the joy that I used to feel. Restore to me the zeal I had. That when, the, when those church doors was open, I didn't stay home. I didn't go somewhere else. I didn't admit I was determined to be there. I heard him make the statement in his message just now. Got his foot on the rock and his mind made up. What is that rock? That rock is Jesus Christ. we got to be founded on the rock. Our mind's got to be made up. We are going to be an army for God. We are. We're going to be soldiers in this army of God. You got one ready, brother? Stand with us if you would, please. And anybody. Now, if you're all right with God, I'm all right with that too. But if you feel like that you need to move up a little closer to the Lord, come up here and have a little word of prayer. Talk to him. That's what the hour is in the house for. Amen. No friend of mine. Well, he sings this stuff. And if you're here and you're lost, Come on up and renew your sins now. Because we're getting ready to leave here. The church is getting ready to leave here. Amen. Let's just see. Praise God. Somebody else, come on. Come on. Don't let the devil steal your joy. You're coming to take it back. Take it back. It's time for the children of God to stand up and say something. We are. An army of God. We're on the battlefield in this army. There's folks dying and going to hell. And it's up to you and I to shine that light out there in the darkness. God them back to the house of God. I'm very, very proud of the way this is going down through the week. I'm proud of every one of you that's come out and supported this. It's done my heart good. It, it, I'm telling you, it has brought me pleasure and joy like I haven't felt in a long time. I got renewed. I'm going to be honest with you. It starts at the top. It starts at the top. My strength has been renewed. My faith is increased. I feel good about it. I got a feeling once we get to the play and all that stuff, we're probably going to see people right up the town get saved. I got a feeling that sometime next year, there's going to be a revival hit Lundell Church and people's going to be saved. I'm going to be saved. Now, if you don't agree with me on this, it can happen. Because no where two or three inside. would agree on anything upon the earth, it'll be done. Yeah, and the Father would say that. So if we can agree on it, now when you agree on it, here's what you're saying. I'm going to agree with my pastor, and I'm going to be there. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. To put the fishing rod up, as he said, old Peter went fishing. Put the fishing rod up. Put the bow back in the corner. Put the tools up back in the garage, back in the toolbox, and say it's church time. It's time to be about the Father's business. We can do it. We can do it. We're going to do it. If we're still here, the church don't rise. We're going to do it. I'm praying for it. I can't get it under the closets at the house, but there's an old rock out behind the house I can kneel down at. I had to throw 70 pairs of shoes out of the closet. And they ain't mine, do you? Well, I, I better back up about, about eight of them mine. Everybody feel good? How about we give God a hand back of praise for the service tonight, too? Yeah, praise God. They smell a lot of trouble. All right. Again, let me thank Bethlehem Church and its Amen. members. Amen. The only thing I want you to do here for the next time you come, bring some songs. Bring some songs. Bring some songs. <laughs>
And any time that you're here, they, you're not no visitor here. We're all a family. When I when me and Roger comes to Bethel, sometimes uh, Brother Earl's probably saying, "Man, you boys need to be quiet a little bit." We're, they're calling the stinker when we want to sit down. We got some nine o'clock Baptists here too. <laughs> When we go up there, we mind the Lord. They make us feel at home when we feel really good. We are a family. This is the family we're going to spend eternity with. And I thank God for you. we got to do it more often. Church has got to start helping one another support one another. Really do. We need to. You know, you got people that they won't go nowhere except their home church. You know, there's a few of them here now. Uh, they don't want to go to these other, They just want to go to their home church. And we need to get out of that. We need to start supporting these other churches and revivals, singing conventions and things, and lifting up the precious name of Jesus. Because it's all about Him. So everybody mind the Lord. Tomorrow night, Jennifer's husband's going to be preaching, being the Lord's will. And somebody will be here to sing. Any of, y'all, any of you guys want to come down and sing tomorrow night? You can come on down. We'll put you to work. I, I, I know next time Patty comes, she's going to bring that song, actually. All right, be the Lord's will. If we ain't already riding together. <laughs> Jason said, do you? Hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is Charles and Pat's grandson right there. Jason, he just recently got saved. Uh, and, and Charles and Pat would have been so proud to see you standing there, a child of God. And Kathy, Kathy has been getting on fire for the Lord, ain't she, Kathy? Uh, the other night she got up and she gave a burning uh, testimony and just stirred us all up. And, and I believe it, it, if I God does let our loved ones see the good things that's happening in life, I believe they were smiling. I believe they were smiling. Man, I'm telling you, and, and what a legacy they left here at Mondale Church. They left a good testimony behind. I just hope I leave as good a testimony or even half of that good as they left behind. They inspired a lot of us. And Brother Earl, I do want to tell you before we go, I know it's getting really late. Well, we got five minutes of Baptist time left. But I just want to tell Brother Earl, Jennifer has bragged on him even before I started coming up there and, and you took Pastor Church. She's bragged on Brother Earl being her Sunday school teacher. When she was a young girl here, she's still a young girl, but when she was a younger girl here, that he was her Sunday school teacher. And she said she really learned a lot from listening to Earl because he explained it. And, and he just, he said it's a plan that child can understand. And she appreciates what you did out here in the Sunday school room for that class. Well, her, her Terry is what I'm talking about. <laughs> her Terry, well, Terry ain't changed. She's calmed down a little bit, but Terry ain't changed. She just got her a new partner to talk with. <laughs> we love y'all. <laughs> Let's give Brother Allen a hand too for, for the message. Alright, my heart's nice too. Yes. Next Thursday at 7 o'clock then. T-shirts? Yeah. Oh, you want you want your husband? Oh, okay. Now that's a big old stick out there. Big. There you go. All right. And I want to say to to the kids, to the children, I'm proud of you. I love you to death. Because when I come by their seats tonight, I said. Y'all sat real still now. Don't be rowdy. And they stayed in their seats and they was not rowdy. I'm very proud of them. We love our children. Okay. All right. I'll head back. Reference is good, Lord. Let's say good night. God bless you. Come back tomorrow night and bring a whole busload with you. Amen. Good night, everyone.